It was so hot on that day. It was back in 1995. I'm walking amongst thousands of individuals. I'm carrying a sign that says racial equality now. I'm in the midst of the protest. It's my first protest ever. Back in Washington, D.C., the Million Man March was taking place. It's just able to increase the saliency of this issue. When we do nothing, individuals lull their conscience to believe that these forms of bias are okay. And it's not. It's not okay to have your knee on a man's neck until he cries out for his mother. And then the life is taken and sucked from him. It's not okay to go into someone's house unannounced and begin to open fire and kill them in the wee hours of the night. It's not okay to mistakenly walk into the home of someone as a police officer and then shoot them dead as they're sitting and standing in their own home. It's not okay for the police to come across a young black man, shoot him 20 times because he's holding a cell phone as he stands in the back of his grandmother's house. It's not okay for a police officer to routinely stop someone. And in that traffic stop, for that person to tell an officer, listen, I have a registered gun, but then to shoot him dead while a four-year-old watches in the back. And God knows it's not okay for a 12-year-old to be on a playground playing with a toy BB gun and police officers to roll up on him within seconds and shoot him dead. It's not okay. I mean, look at Lyndon B. Johnson, the highest moments in which he's addressing race. Birmingham is in the background. Nixon, the Chicano movement. If we're looking at Carter, you got the Black College Day marches. Reagan, anti-apartheid protests. Also, Bush, L.A. riots. And Clinton, the Million Man March. And it goes on and on and on. Congress, the president, even the Supreme Court, in the walls there of the court system, when protest occurs in America that deals with race, justices are more likely to take cases that revolve around racial and ethnic minority concerns. And those justices are more likely to vote in a direction that pushes for racial equality in America are going to lead to the Republican decreasing their two-party vote share by 6% and Democrats increasing their vote share by 2%. That's an 8% swing. See, we can run fancy numbers now that we've counted all the protests and we can quantify its impact. A situation in which individuals have voiced their concerns pushing back. And it's not just a pushback that is people thinking a certain way and then individuals acting a certain way. No, they are bringing their thoughts to action. We see this with White Lives Matter in a sort of more, less overt fashion. But we've seen it in a more overt fashion with all out white supremacist organizations and individuals just pushing back in the most egregious way. In my years of studying this and studying protests, especially on race, what I've found is that those negative sentiments, those sentiments do not lead to individuals voting a certain way or even coming out to the polls. Take 2016, for example. We analyzed the way in which individuals felt about the Black Lives Matter movement. And trust me, there were some people that absolutely hated the Black Lives Matter movement. 
and there was much vitriol. However, their negative sentiment did not influence whether or not they voted. Yes, other factors influenced their vote, such as their education or their age. However, on the flip side, those individuals that had a positive perception about the Black Lives Matter movement or about black protests, those individuals were more likely to go to the polls. The one thing I can say about those elections is that the myth of the silent majority just is simply that, a myth. The loud minority protesters on the ground are speaking to the silent majority. And those discussions are going to move to actions, I believe, in November. Last thing I'll leave you with. Stop. Stop for a moment. Listen. Do you, do you hear it? Demonstrators' feet pounding the ground. Signs being hoisted in the air as they ruffle. The chants coming from the distance. Indeed, that is the slow beating heart of American democracy.